Hi, this is Don White, and this is God's Money. As all of us know, President Donald Trump became the president on the 20th of January last Friday. What's been amazing to me since he became president is how many people have been anti-Trump. Now, I'm not going to sit here today and be pro-Trump, anti-Trump. I'm just being an observer to this whole entire thing. And I think it's fascinating to me how many people are anti-Trump. This week I've been reading the Palm Beach Post. It's our local newspaper. And they have a section in the Palm Beach Post, the opinion page. And on it they have one guy that says from the left and another guy that is from the right. And typically what you'd see for years and years that I've been reading this newspaper is that the person on the left would have an opinion, the person on the right would have an opinion, and they typically didn't necessarily agree. Today, every single day since Donald Trump has been elected, those opinion pages have actually agreed. The people on the left don't like what Trump is doing, and the people on the right don't like what Trump is doing. And it's really interesting because in all my time, I've never seen that. It's virtually unprecedented. But the one thing that no one is talking about right now that I think really needs to be discussed, it's not the oil pipeline, it's not the changes in Congress, it's not the cabinet appointments, it's the debt. No one is talking about the debt. And yet our debt in this country continues to spiral almost out of control. But no one discusses it. Mr. Trump's not discussing it. The Republicans are not discussing it. The Democrats are not discussing it. It's almost as though it doesn't exist. But sadly, it does exist. Debt in our country is fast approaching. Are you ready for this, folks? $20 trillion. And it does not appear to be going anywhere but up. Now, you know, if we lived in the times of Moses, every seven years, you're supposed to get all your debt forgiven. Wouldn't that be cool? You know, we just forgive the debt, but it, but it doesn't work that way. And the truth is, we have to be very, very cognizant of the fact that not only does the country have huge amounts of debt as a nation, as a government, but also each one of us as individuals are spiraling, it seems like almost every day, into greater and greater folly because of debt. And because we continue to allow debt to accumulate in our personal lives. The Bible tells us that the, that the borrower is always slave to the lender. It's just a fact. The truth is, as the Bible tells us, I believe it's in Proverbs 22 or somewhere in that range, it says that if you owe somebody something and they come to call your debt, they have every right to take your bed right out from underneath you. The truth is, one day there's going to be a day of reckoning for this billions and billions and billions of dollars that we keep borrowing unabashedly, it appears, to run our government. And it's also going to be a day of reckoning for each one of us individually. When people begin to think about retirement, one of the first things they think about is, can I get along on the assets that I've accumulated? That's just a logical question that every single person, in fact, should always ask. Most people don't ask that question enough when they're younger. When you're young, you need to be thinking about the fact that one day you're not going to be young. And when you're really doing well, and when you're doing your best, when you're making the most money that you possibly could, that's when you need to be cutting back on your debt. The same is true with our government, but the fact is, I'm not talking about our government today. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about me. The truth is, if you have debt in your life, you need to get rid of it. If you have uh, credit card debt, for example, you're probably paying 15, 16, maybe even 21% or more in interest every single year to have that debt. That's just not intelligent and certainly not a good use of God's money. You would actually be better off taking money out of, out of all of your accounts and paying it off, but the truth is, most people do that and then they go right back into debt anyhow. They haven't fixed the problem. And so if you haven't fixed the problem, you haven't asked the question of why do I have that debt? You see, everybody always wants to answer the question of how do I get rid of my debt? When should I get rid of my debt? Those are not questions that you should be asking. The real question you should be asking is why do you have it in the first place? And typically the reason why we have debt 
and by the way, this could even include mortgage debt on your home, is simply because we spend more than we can. If you spend more money than you are capable of earning, you're going to have to go into debt. It's just a definitional thing. And the truth is, most of us go into debt and then keep that debt into perpetuity. Fact is, most people have car debt forever. Most people have credit card debt forever. Now, I know I hear everybody telling me all the time, oh, Don, you know, I got my credit cards and I pay them off every month. Statistics don't bear that out. Uh, if you talk to the credit card companies, they'll tell you the reason they're in business is because the vast majority of people don't pay their cards off every month. The vast majority of people actually continue to accumulate debt. So really what I want you to focus on, not so much how to get rid of your debt, I can teach you how to do that. Not when to get rid of that, it should be now. But really, why are you in debt in the first place? Why are you spending more money than you make? Because if that is not dealt with, you can take all the money out of your retirement account, for example, pay off all your debt and go to zero debt. And what good is it if you just go right back into it, spending more money than you make? So here's what you need to do. Analyze, why am I spending more than I make? Is it because of lifestyle? Is it because of just issues with uh, maybe uh, health issues, maybe uh, wh whatever? I, I, it doesn't really make any difference what it is. Analyze whether or not you can do anything about it. Because if you can answer the question why, the question how, when, where, all those really are not questions at all. They just become statements. So think about why you're in debt. And remember this, when you're in debt, you're not using God's money appropriately. It's just that simple. You, you, it limits the amount of money that you can give to charity, for example, and to help others. It limits the amount that you can do as far as uh, helping your family if they get into, in, into challenges. Be aware of the why. Pay attention to that and the how and the when and all the other menial questions really are not questions, just statements, become just that. We need to understand why we do what we do because when we understand why, we can utilize God's money properly. So find out why you're in debt and once you find out why you're in debt, stop doing it. Stop, change your behavior, change the things that, that can really make a difference. In 1 Timothy, it says this, I wrote this book to you, he says to Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15, I wrote this book to you so that you can know how to conduct yourself. The Bible tells us how to conduct ourselves. And one of the key things he wants is for his people to be debt-free. Wouldn't it be great if our country was also debt-free? Hey, you have a great day. This is Don White, and this is God's Money.